Nala. You can't be in every video. <laughs> can't, Come you on. can sort of see her. Go Come on. on. Are you still recording the video for me? What video? I love for Valentine's. No. Hello everybody. First of all, I want to start by saying happy Valentine's Day or happy Galentine's Day or Palentine's Day. There's so many different variations of telling someone you love them today. What else? Or if you're single, it doesn't matter. It's just a day. I'm wearing my special Valentine's shirt for the occasion and this video has nothing to do with Valentine's Day. So if you've clicked this thinking, oh, I'm so done with Valentine's, don't worry. This actually has nothing to do with Valentine's Day at all. Just before I start this video, I'm just gonna throw it out there and say, I feel like I look like a sack of poop today. So we've gone for a bit more of a cozy ambient vibe, which I actually quite like because this room is like one of the coziest rooms in the whole house and I absolutely love it. So I quite like that we're channeling more of a cozy vibe, but it is also to cover up the fact that I have a chin growing on my chin. It's the biggest spot I've ever had in my entire life. Um, if I wasn't so like frustrated about it, I would be proud of it. <laughs> Quite a while back, I asked on Twitter what questions you would love me to answer that I had never answered before or that you would love to know. And I saved them all for a special occasion. This is definitely gonna be a Q&A that spans over a couple of videos because there was so many questions that I was like, I would love to answer that and I've never answered that. So I'm gonna start going through them. Ah, oh, that one's cute. Alf! Come here a sec. Do you mind just sitting in this a second? Do you know how like, unready I am? Because it's Valentine's Day, I have just said this isn't about Valentine's Day, it's actually a Q&A, but the first question I've got on here is, when did you realise you actually loved Alfie? Oh, like, here we go. What made it click? And I was like, do you know what? It is Valentine's Day, let's answer this together. I think I realised I loved Alfie when, Obviously before I moved here, because me moving was actually a really big deal. Like I'd grown yeah. up in a tiny village, I'd never thought I would move. So obviously I realised I loved you before that, otherwise I would never have moved to Brighton. I don't know, I think just when I was always thinking about you and always wanted to talk to you. Because you had never loved anyone before, so how did you know? All right, blooming hell, <laughs> bring me in the video randomly blimmin' dumped me under it. I don't know. I don't know. I need some time to think of this answer. I don't know, just like so used to the person being there kind of thing. Mm. Like I can't imagine living in a house without you living there. But then obviously you don't have to live with somebody to love them, so I don't know. So you basically just got used to me and thought, well, I must love her then. <laughs> oh, it's been too long now. I can't back out. I'm stuck. I quite liked this question. It was from Charlotte and she said, I don't know if anyone has asked it before, but I would like to know which dream of yours you remember the clearest. When I was a teenager, I used to have this dream that I was a witch, my mum was a witch, and my mum's mum, so my nan was a witch as well. And it was so vivid and I used to have it so much and I really enjoyed it because in the dream we all had brooms and we could fly and I just remember dreaming it and feeling like I could actually fly and then waking up the next day being like if I really concentrate I think I can fly like it was the weird and I'm a teenager at this point so I know I can't fly but it just felt so real and I had that dream so many times I've never had like repeat dreams apart from that one and also tsunamis which I guess is a nightmare but I used to dream that a lot, like at least once a week I would dream that me, my mum and my nan were witches and we were good witches, not bad witches and we could fly on brooms and no one else knew and it was like this family secret that we had and it was just the best thing ever. Zoe Bonner said, why don't you have your own gaming channel? I actually do like gaming, maybe not kind of more of like the console sense but I really like playing. PC or Mac games. Things like Sims, I could spend hours and hours on Sims. I love watching Sims gaming and I play that with Alfie. But I did actually try and film my own gaming video and it didn't go down very well. I was trying to play Theme Hospital because it's one of my favorite games ever and I just, there's not very many people online that play it and I was like, I'm gonna try. And I was gonna upload it on my second channel or Alfie's gaming channel and I can't remember which. 
but when I'm actually playing the game, I'm not very good at commentating over it. So because I concentrate so much on the game, I don't actually speak. So this, this whole episode that I filmed, which must have been about 40 minutes long, I feel like I didn't have much kind of charisma or character and I was like, no one's gonna watch this and I'm not being very entertaining and all I'm really doing is filming myself playing a game and not saying anything. So that is why I don't have a gaming channel and I think if I was to film Sims without Alfie, he wouldn't remind me to talk, I would just get so into it but it's good that there's two of us that film it because he reminds me I need to actually talk. Heather said, if you could go back and change one thing that has happened to you, what would it be? I think this is quite a deep question because even though there are certainly things in my life I've not enjoyed or things that I sort of feel like I would do a little differently, ultimately I do believe that everything happens for a reason and that bad things happen so good things can happen after it and that the bad things kind of um, show the value of the good things and when I think of it like that I think I wouldn't change anything but if we're getting like down to the nitty gritty there are certainly things that I'm like why didn't I do this or why did I put up with that or why didn't I say this but then I'm like if I didn't would I be here today would I be sat making this video in my house in Brighton like I don't know Holly said what is it actually like to be reported about in the news about every little thing you do. <laughs> On the grand scheme of things, I don't get written about as much as, you know, actual like celebrities and people that have like interesting lives. I don't know, like if I'm being completely honest, I hate it. <laughs> if we're just gonna strip this down and uh, talk you know, one-to-one, -one. I really don't like it. I love being online, I love having control over everything I can post, I love you guys and everyone that watches and gets involved, and I liked that I had built my own community and we could talk about what we wanted, and I'm so fortunate in the sense that there are so many of you, and it's kind of like we created our own little, like, I don't know, I feel like YouTubers and like, the online space don't see traditional media in that same way. We don't need traditional media to tell a story because we can do that ourselves. And so I think sometimes when I'm trying to tell my story and they go, oh, this is kind of interesting, let's write about this, and it doesn't always spin what I've said in a positive way, just to get clicks. It's really weird to get my head around because I think also a lot of people forget that when I started this, there was no, oh, but if my channel grows to this size, then the press will be interested and there'll be people stopping you in the street and you'll go to signings and you'll do signatures and uh, you could be sat in a restaurant with your family and someone will come up and ask you for a video message for their best friend. Like, I didn't know what could ever be, if that makes sense. There was no one that was already experiencing all of this and if there was, I wasn't aware of them. So um, it was all very new and I had to learn very quickly how to kind of balance that because ultimately all I really wanted to do was film videos for an audience of people online and it hadn't really occurred to me that if that audience grew on a much, much larger scale that that would change the way I lived my life offline, if that makes sense. I feel like quite a lot of the time people will say, you know, oh, but you know, it's just part of it, it's part of it. But when a lot of YouTubers started, it wasn't part of it and it's something that people have had to learn to deal with and kind of learn to slot into their like everyday lives. And it is scary, daunting, unpredictable, um, but there are also really amazing aspects of that as well because it means I get to actually meet you guys. If 10 year old you could see you now, how would she feel? I don't know, this one's a hard one because I feel like I have pinch me moments all the time. I don't take any of this for granted and it still surprises me on a weekly basis that 
I am doing the things that I'm doing and that my life has gone this way. And so I don't even think 10 year old Zoe would ever think that 26 year old Zoe would be doing all the things she's doing. I don't know. Have any friends ever left you slash judged you because of your career? Um, I think anyone that's ever had an issue with it or not understood it or kind of turned a blind eye or mocked it, which I definitely did have when I first started doing this, but it was all very indirect. Those people weren't ever really friends and they're not my friends now. Um, if that makes sense. Like, they were kind of people I knew. Starting a relationship online is daunting and um, because of the size of the audience, you, you are aware of people kind of judging your every move and kind of taking what they want from certain things and that's just what happens. Um, but so much of the time, it's so focused on relationships when actually, I think it can be just as difficult having friendships online, especially if those other people aren't too sure about, you know, being online or being on camera, um, or if they have channels themselves and they're not sure if they want to be in your videos or kind of what can come from that. And it can be, it can make me quite paranoid because I want people to be my friend for me, not for anything else. And I had this like time where I was like, no one's gonna wanna be my friend because they're not gonna wanna be on my channel. Like how daunting is that gonna be? Or they're not gonna wanna hang out with me because they're gonna think I'm a certain way when I'm not, or I don't know. It, I, I honestly think I wish more people would like talk about this a bit more because it is so like relationship focused. like. What's it like having a boyfriend that daily vlogs and what's it like, you know, having a relationship online but you don't really talk about kind of friendships or building friendships or not knowing if someone really wants to be your friend or doesn't. And that is like a whole thing in itself. I'm like a super trusting person. I basically just trust everybody and like welcome anyone with like open arms and I think at one point I was a bit like maybe I shouldn't be doing this I don't know like, I was really like questioning it and I was like what do people want from me I don't know but all the friends I have now are so supportive and so lovely whether they're YouTube friends or non YouTube friends and I think some of them still find it kind of weird like I was with some of my friends recently actually I think it was like last year and I was putting petrol in the car and someone was like screaming like Zoella and my friend was like I find it so weird because to me you're not Zoella to me you're just Zoe and it's kind of like that kind of clicking in and out of like oh yeah that's that's what you do and that's like your work thing but I know you as like Zoe when did you decide that you wanted to live on your own out of your family house and was it a scary or an easy decision? Growing up, I always thought I would live in my tiny village for the rest of my life. I couldn't imagine ever moving away, ever. In fact, me and my friend, um, who we lived quite close to one another, we were always like, oh, we need to stay in this village forever and you know, you'll have a house there and I'll have a house there and our kids will go to the same primary school and we'll stay here. And pretty much all my family lived kind of like 10 minutes around me. Um, and I just thought that's where I would always be. And I'm definitely a home comforts girl, which you all know. And I didn't really do a lot of traveling. In fact, before I did YouTube, I think the only places I'd ever visited was the Maldives on a family holiday and Portugal. I had no desire to travel the world. I just wasn't really interested in it and I loved being at home, I loved being around my family, I loved my tiny little village life and I I think I couldn't imagine a different life to that if that makes sense. But when I started doing YouTube I massively grew in confidence, even more so off camera than on camera. I think like my parents will agree with me here that I started going to London to events and for me that was like terrifying 
I was getting the train to London, I was meeting new people, I was going to events and meetings and I was filming collabs with like Marcus in Bristol and I'd never driven to Bristol on my own even though it really wasn't that far away but I drove across Bristol to go and hang out with Marcus and Naomi and I filmed with Marcus and, and then I started going to conventions in like Florida and LA and um, Milan and like all these different places and I think that made me see that the world was a lot bigger than just my village which I still absolutely love but when I met Alfie and I came to Brighton on the train I remember getting off the train and just being like I love this city I instantly felt like I could live there and I've never felt like that about any other place I've ever visited in my life and the minute I got off that train I was like this is a really nice place I feel really comfortable here I really really love it in fact the only other place I feel like I have felt like that is Edinburgh and I'm not going to move to Edinburgh, don't, don't worry. And obviously as me and Alfie were dating, seeing each other, going out, whatever, um, I used to drive to see him like every week and that's like a two and a half hour drive and I was doing that like every week, twice a week and every time I was in Brighton it just felt more and more comfortable and more and more like home and so eventually I was like I kind of want to be here, like I love the sea, I love that there's the countryside and I've done this drive so often now, it doesn't feel far, if that makes sense, like the more I'd done it, the more it didn't feel far away. I knew obviously I wasn't going to be living with my dad and my brother for the rest of my life and I was starting to think about where do I want to move out and as I was kind of making these decisions I was visiting Brighton a lot and I was like I think I just want to move to Brighton. I didn't want to move straight in with Alfie because I think packing up your whole life and moving like two and a half hours away is already like a big deal maybe not to everyone but it certainly was to like this country bumpkin. Um, so I moved into my own place obviously me and Alfie saw each other every single day and he may as well have lived with me but I still like that I made that step on my own and I was renting that place and it had all my things in and I think living there made me realise that this is where I want to be and then me and Alfie moved in together and the rest is history. Did that rhyme? I feel like it might have done. Are there any YouTubers that you hate or dislike but don't want to say anything or hurt anyone's feelings? I really could dish the dirt here but it's not my kind of vibe. <laughs> so all I'm gonna say is, yes, there are some really not very nice people who make YouTube videos who I would be more than happy to never see ever again or cross paths with, but that's the same for everything in life. If you work in an office, you're not gonna like everyone you work with, and YouTube is a place for anyone to upload videos, and there are hundreds and thousands of people that make videos. So I think it's only right that some are not the sort of people that I would like. And the only people that I don't like are people that have been rude or unnecessarily bullyish towards me or my friends. But then that's just the same for anything. There's people like that in school who are just not very nice. It just so happens that some of those people have created YouTube channels. But yeah, I'm not gonna say names because that's not my style, but you never know. Never say never. How does it really feel to date someone almost four years younger than you? Um, I don't really think about it too much because Alfie is actually quite a mature 23 year old. Is he 23? I think Alfie is quite a mature 23 year old and I'm quite an immature 26 year old so I think somewhere we balance out and it's absolutely fine. I never even think about the fact that he is younger than me in that sense and I think as we get older the gap kind of closes anyway. Um, the only time it's really obvious is when I'm going, oh my god, do you remember that program? And he's like, no, I watched this. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like, I can't believe you were watching that when I was watching that. Because I feel like when you're much younger, the age gap is much bigger. But apart from that, I don't really think about it. With your high metabolism, were you ever bullied or had hate about it? If so, how do you deal with it? I have a high metabolism too. Yes, in answer to that, I have had pretty much my whole life. I've never been bullied. I wouldn't say I've ever been bullied about it, but people ha make remarks, even now. I don't know, I think up until the point I realized it wasn't okay and it was making me feel bad, 
which must have been around 1819, I didn't think too much about it, I just used to laugh it off, so it would be like family members or like friends or like people in school would say things like, you're so skinny, like why are you so skinny or you should put some meat on those bones or come on finish up, you need to eat, you, you need more pies, like you name it, I've heard it. <laughs> Naturally, both myself and Joe and my mum and dad are very like petite people. I wouldn't say it completely changed the way I viewed myself because I was always quite happy with my body and it was only when people would make the remark that I would go, oh, like, am I too skinny? Do my collarbones stick out? Like, am I too bony? I want to feel, I want to look how people think I should look. It wasn't even about me. It wasn't that I would look at myself and be like, I think I'm too skinny. It was that other people saying these things made me feel like I should put weight on for them. I don't know. I, I never had that same like view of myself that everybody else had. So I felt like I needed to please them rather than pleasing myself. I would say the only time I was very self-conscious about my body was when I got boobs and a bum but was like so skinny. Basically my boobs and my bum came at the same time. I've got the stretch marks to prove it because <laughs> they didn't gradually go there, they just were there. And I had reached like my peak height, but I was still really skinny. And um, it just, I think at that point I looked at myself and I was like, my proportions don't feel right. I don't feel comfortable like this. And then as I got older, I sort of like evened out a bit more, but I do still get it. In fact, there was one time um, I was at a party and someone who was like an adult at the time, I must have been about 21, 22, um, and an adult, I didn't really know them particularly well, came up to me in front of everyone and was like, why are you so skinny? And I was like, I don't have an, I don't, I can't give you an answer to this because I just feel so uncomfortable. And I was like, what do you mean? And this person was like, you're so, you're too skinny. You need to eat. And it was really weird because I'd only really had comments like that as I was growing up. And I felt like those people were kind of looking out for me or they were like teachers or like, I don't know, like people that I thought just wanted the best for me. But when I'm a 22 year old woman, grown woman, and someone's still talking to me like that, I was a bit like, this is not okay. Like, I don't like this. This isn't, this isn't helpful and this is, you're embarrassing me in front of everybody. I don't know what to say to you. And I also felt like I wasn't entitled to feel like that because I knew people who really wanted to lose weight and I felt like I couldn't moan for being smaller or skinnier. I felt like I wasn't allowed to. I, I felt almost like, you should, you should, you, you're not allowed to dislike what you look like because there are people who would love to lose weight, so therefore you can't. But actually, if you have some form of kind of body image issue or you don't feel very self-confident or there are certain things people say to you about your appearance that really get to you, you are allowed to feel down about it. You're allowed to feel self-conscious about it. You're allowed to feel those things um, because everybody has something that they wish they could change or they don't like or you know one day you might like it the other day you might not and even now as I'm 26 there are there are times when I look in the mirror and go where have my tits gone or like why is my bum drooping or why is my skin so bad today like there's always something that someone feels more self-conscious about so you are allowed to have those days and I think I learned that as an adult, um, I just kind of learned not to care. As long as you're happy and you're healthy, no one else's opinions matter. Um, and I think that that's really important to remember. And I think I'm gonna leave the Q&A there because I've already rambled on for far too long and I need to edit this and it's gonna take me a while. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of more chilled Q&A video. I've got lots more questions to answer. So I'm gonna do another one of these uh, quite soon because there are still some great questions that you guys had. I really hope you've had a lovely day. However you spent it, I love you anyway. So I hope that counts for something. And uh, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again very soon, guys.